Now, the Morton Theatre in St Albans, Hertfordshire, present the world premiere of their live, online, musical, interactive version of William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. The show will be playing for three nights to an audience using Zoom, and you can join in the fun for just a tenner. This version of Twelfth Night is set on a luxury cruise liner in the Roaring Twenties. I'm loving it already. With ten actors welcoming the audience aboard the glamorous SS Illyria for its maiden voyage. Here to tell us more is the director of the show and the artistic director of the Morting Theatre uh, itself, Adam Nichols. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Roaring Twenties, there's something magical about that whole period. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's such a, a glamorous era, um, wonderful clothes, wonderful music. Um, so, yeah, it seemed like a perfect setting for this particular play. And it's it's you know, it's a very famous romantic comedy, isn't it? That's the whole point of Twelfth Night. It is. Um, it, it's very funny, but it also has a kind of dark side as well, which I think is one of the, the interesting things about the play. So, yeah, it is. It's funny. It's fun. Um, but but yeah, there is that kind of slightly dark side to the humour as well, which I think makes it interesting. So how is it going to work then? I know <laughs> there's 10 actors and I know it's on on Zoom, but I mean, it, it just it's blowing my mind to just think about how you bring it all together. Yeah, it's 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 a challenge. So we have the actors are, are obviously all in their own homes, um, as they have been, you know, throughout lockdown. And so we've been making the show that way, and they will be performing from their well, their front rooms. I think in some cases their their offices or their sheds, perhaps. Um, but effectively, we've had to create a little studio for each of them um, in their in their homes. So we're using green screen technology. Um, we've had to think very carefully about the lighting and the sound. Um, so yeah, it's been a, it's it's a technical challenge as well as a, a performing challenge i mean the wonderful thing is that the the whole sort of show business industry has been remarkably nimble and agile at being able to adapt to this well as as the government like to keep telling us these unprecedented times mm. that's true um i think for us what we've been trying to figure out is how can you create an experience that feel somewhat like going to a live performance because you know theatre is a very different medium to film and tv um and there's something about that experience of sitting in an auditorium with other people but also with the actors in the same room um that is what makes theatre magical i think and it's not always easy to translate that kind of that kind of feeling to to the screen so the biggest challenge for us really has been how do you use the technology um, to make people feel uh, at least to some extent that they're actually sitting in a theatre rather than just watching the TV. And how easy was it to cast it? Because it, it probably takes a, a, a special kind of performer to be able to do this as an ensemble, but totally in isolation. Yeah, so this was a show that we'd done before. We did it last year, um, both in St Albans, but also down in, at the Rose Playhouse in London. So it's mostly the same cast. We've had to recast a couple of the actors who, who weren't available to, to unfortunately to be in the show this time um so we, we had some familiarity with text some familiarity with uh the different actors with with each other and, and the the characterization and so on and the performances but i think we found as we worked on it that it's ended up being more different to that original show um than we'd expected when we started so although the setting the context the theme is the same the style of acting um the, the manner of performance again you know it's different on screen than it is on stage oh, yes but but it's a musical as well i mean talk about making it difficult for yourselves <laughs> the music is the biggest challenge actually so um because you know the way that we consume um streaming um it, the way that our internet connections affect what we see and um, affect what's being transmitted by the actors so getting the music to work so that you're actually seeing a, a nice aligned uh song um or piece of music where the uh, the actors are singing uh, at the same time as you're hearing them singing um that's that's a big challenge um uh, but again um we have a, a fantastic um bunch of actors who are very talented singers and musicians um who really bring that that music to life what's what's been the the biggest challenge for you as as the director of this then i think not being in the same room as the actors is is difficult um because the way that the way that you you create theatre productions it, it, for us at least it's such a collaborative process 
um, and being in the room um, is, is is critical. You know, your ability to actually uh, get up and, and sort of get involved, really, I suppose, um, with the actors um, to help them to uh, create their performances. So that's been the hardest thing, although I think we've managed to adapt quite well to uh, a rehearsal process on Zoom. Um, and of course, you know, depending on what happens over the next few months, it may well be some considerable amount of time before theatre practitioners are able to go back to making work in the way that they've always we've always been been used to doing well, i was i was going to say do you think this this may well be a, a sort of short-term fix to hopefully not a sustained uh, or too long a sustained period of of um not performing on stage yeah i mean i think i think creating digital work is definitely going to be part of it um i think however that there's no real substitute for being you know in a live performance so alongside thinking of of other digital projects that we've got sort of in the in the pipeline we're also thinking about uh what's going to be the quickest and easiest way to create some sort of live performance experience when we're allowed to um that gives people that buzz um that you you, know, you just can't really recreate from from watching on screen but it's definitely part of it and you know i think it's been interesting to see the way that some of the the major theater uh, companies and, and venues like the National and the Royal Shakespeare Company and the Globe have started putting their work online. Uh, of course, that's rather different because that's a recording of a, a, a live performance that took place. What I think is quite interesting is the way that theatre practitioners are starting to innovate around the technology. Um, so, as I, as I said before, you know, thinking about how you create something that's more theatrical uh, using the technology that we've got available to us. And that, that I think, is is exciting and potentially even when we're allowed to go back into theatres again, might be something that actually stays with 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 theatre, you know, going forward. So, in the introduction, I said um, uh, that it's live online musical interactive version of William Shakespeare. Does that mean that we, as the audience, have a part to play? Yes, indeed. Um, so, if you've been on a, most of us have been on Zoom calls or. Uh, Google Meets or um, Microsoft Teams or whatever over the last two or three months it's become a familiar environment so what we're trying to do yes absolutely as you say is get the audience involved at different points um, in the play um, in helping to drive the action forward and being part of some of the scenes so there are little uh, items that we ask the audience to bring with them uh, um, and there will be points, yes, where if they want to, and of course I'm not going to force anyone to do it, but if they want to, they can they can be part of the uh, part of the production as well. I think it's I, mean, I think it's a really great um, idea, and anything that that brings some theatre uh, to our lives. As someone who hasn't been to the theatre now for nearly three months, I'm beginning to get withdrawal symptoms. It's you know it, it is all well and good watching them um, on online or on YouTube or whatever, but it, it's not the same as being there and smelling the air and seeing the fear in the performer's eyes if they get something wrong. <laughs> it's, it's just the bad side of me right. coming in. Well, no, I know what you mean. And I think there is that, that element of jeopardy. Um, I think just the fact that, the, that we're performing live um, makes that, I think, seem like yeah uh, more of a uh, a real theatre experience um and you know as as there are in in all productions it will vary from night to night you know that's one of the, the glorious things about theatre i think that you can go and see a production several times and it's always different um so yeah i think i think that definitely the actors are feeling the jeopardy because as i say they're having to act as uh, technical operators lighting operators sound operators as well as as well as think about their performances as actors it's a nice length of show as well it's 75 minutes i think that that's kind of just just about right really especially from a sort of televisual point of view exactly um and i think it, it, again one of the debates that's going on in the theater industry right now is how does theater adapt to this new world and um anyone who's got children of uh, sort of teenage years as i do uh, they're obsessed with tiktok um, and tiktok is obviously a short form medium and the, the discussion that's going on in the theatre world at the moment is why aren't we creating more kind of short form uh, plays and, and theatre productions um, that cater more for that kind of that kind of uh, people that people that are used to that kind of medium. So, yeah, I mean, this is obviously, yeah, as you say, an hour and a quarter. I think that's long enough to be to be watching a screen. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll be a sort of pithy, pacey. 75 minutes uh, that'll fly by um, and be very enjoyable. So wearing your artistic director's hat, um, how is how is the Maltings Theatre doing in, in this period of lockdown? 
Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been challenged as it has been for all theatres. Um, so we were in the middle of our spring season when the lockdown started. So we had three shows that were 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 being performed at, 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 at the time, which we obviously had to postpone. We we will bring them back at some stage, um, and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a challenge trying to think about how we can start to bring live performance back into people's lives. We're thinking quite a lot about outdoors because we do a lot of open air theatre in the summer. Um, and we think that might be you know, the first kind of opportunity we have to bring live audiences back together again before they're allowed to gather in, a, in an indoor environment. So we've been busy working on, on ideas around that, um, also around, around digital projects as well. Um, the other thing I think we feel quite... I suppose, optimistic, because given that London Theatre Land, I suspect, will be closed probably well into next year, possibly through to next summer, there's an opportunity, we think, to attract people to come and uh, come to our venue um, that maybe haven't haven't done so before, who are used to going to the theatre in London. I think that local focus that we have, and really being a a local venue um, that's primarily focused on creating great quality theatre for our local community. Um, I think we're quite well placed as lockdown starts to ease, but perhaps the larger theatres in London aren't, aren't open yet um, to get people through the doors and, and hopefully give them some, some great theatre. So uh, into the final few days of rehearsal, are the cast about ready to um, take to the stage, so to speak, on the 12th of June? They are. Um, we're, we're doing a test performance this week. Whenever we do, we've done sort of promenade and immersive work before. And one of the challenges always is if you don't have an audience and you've, you've got lots of audience interaction, it's quite hard to rehearse. So we have a, a, a sort of test performance this week uh, to test out some of the interactivity. And then, yeah, we're good to go on Friday. Um, and we've had an amazing response, actually, from not just just from from Hertfordshire or the UK, but actually people booking tickets from all over the world. And that's one of the exciting things about it, that we can reach a much wider audience. So, yeah, the cast are raring to go. Well, yeah, and I guess it's great to be able to reach out and, and have a, 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 you know, a, a new audience um, coming in to admire the work that you do. It's super exciting, you know, looking at where people have been t- booking tickets it's from we've got people in the us people in kenya um people in the far east um booking tickets so yeah it's it's, it's very exciting to reach that wider audience well getting quick a 12th night by the morting theater is uh on your well on your your screen uh, i suppose from the comfort of your own home on friday june the 12th saturday the 13th and sunday the 14th at eight o'clock in the evening probably the best place to get details is facebook.com forward slash morting theatre and i know adam would be delighted if you could join the cast and don't forget to um well, to join in as well adam i wish you well uh, with the production thank you very much for joining us today thank you